This week in IT, Microsoft releases a big update for Copilot for Windows. There's lots of changes coming to Windows 11, 24H2 and 25H2 in the latest security update. And October's Patch Tuesday is the last free security update for Windows 10 users. So stay tuned for all the latest news. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about Azure, Microsoft 365 and Windows. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Caresoft. If you use Copilot for Windows, you may have noticed a fairly big change this week. Microsoft has not only given the user interface a bit of an update, so it looks a bit more like the home page that you see in Edge, showing up some documents and some things that you want to do with some tiles and all the rest of it. But Microsoft has also added a whole load of new features, and there are some preview features that are for Windows Insiders. But let's have a quick look at what everyone is getting right now. Now, if you're used to using a personal assistant on your know, iPhone or on a Google-based phone, then you'll be familiar with things like Hey Siri, which basically allows you to wake up the personal assistant with a voice command. Microsoft is adding this capability to Windows, so you'll be able to wake up Copilot by just saying, Hey Copilot. Now, this setting is not enabled by default, so you don't have to worry about it suddenly appearing. It's something that you'll have to go into the settings app to enable. And Microsoft says that either a period of silence or tapping will switch off the voice activation so that it's no longer listening to what you're saying. Now, this kind of coincides with the feature where Copilot is able to listen to everything that you're saying when you tell it to listen, of course. And you can, you know, instead of typing in what you want to query, you just tell it. Now, the other big feature that's been released kind of into general availability with this update this week in Copilot is something called Copilot Vision. Now, I've talked about it on this channel before, and while it appeared as an option on my Copilot, it never actually worked. It just failed as soon as I clicked the little binoculars button or icon that you see in Copilot. This week, I was actually able to test it for the first time, so it seems that it's working now for everyone. And to be honest, for a first-generation product, it works pretty well. So I had a time that I needed to complete in Excel. And I wanted to use a feature called Power Query, which I've never used before, to merge some data together and get that resulting data. Now, I could have gone out to the internet to work out how Power Query works from Microsoft's documentation, found a YouTube video or whatever, but I decided, no, let's give Copilot Vision a try. So I shared my Excel window with Copilot Vision, so you can share your entire screen or you can share just a particular app. That's what I did. And I basically told Copilot, this is what I want to do. Can you tell me how to do it? So it thought for just a couple of seconds and then it proceeded to tell me, click here, click there, do this, do that. And you know what? It actually worked. It was quite impressive. And it even, although it took a little bit longer, highlighted the areas on the screen where I needed to click. But actually, I'd already clicked on them before it actually got round to highlighting those areas. So I guess it just takes a little bit longer to do a full optical recognition of what it's seeing to identify itself exactly where that area you need to click is. So that's all pretty impressive. I suggest you give that a try. I, again, I haven't tried it for anything very very complicated. So, you know, maybe it will fall over, but at least for basic things, it can be quite useful, it seems. Copilot Actions are currently in preview for insiders, and they're going to allow you to do things like, you know, click on a document and summarize it, sort photographs, which sounds like it would be quite useful. And these actions run under a dedicated system account, so they don't run as the local user, and they're quite restricted in what they can do in order to protect you you from you know, uh, injection prompts into Copilot and malicious attempts to get at your data. So it'll be interesting to see how all of that works in practice. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in the updates that came to Windows 11 in the October Patch Tuesday update. Microsoft is also bringing connectors to Copilot for Windows. So if you've seen in ChatGPT things like connect to 
Outlook, connect to Google Drive. I think Office 365, Microsoft 365, I should say, has them as well to connect out to other systems. They're bringing that functionality into Copilot for Windows. So you'll be able to connect to, I don't know, your Google Drive or your Gmail or some kind of external system and work you know with copilot to query the data we've also talked a bit about this in the past but they were talking again about the ability to ask copilot to change windows settings using natural language so you could say something i don't know like uh make my mouse pointer bigger and it will go off and find the appropriate setting and as far as i understand maybe even perform the action for you, make the mouse pointer bigger. So that's something that they're working on. They also announced some other integrations. So they are developing a system called Manus. I don't know if it's the correct way to pronounce it. It will essentially be able to take a set of local documents and turn them into a website. So, well, we'll have to see how that works. And they were also announced uh, an integration with Filmora, which is a video editing software. Not exactly sure what that's going to do, but not something that I use personally but maybe it will help you to bring, you know, files that you have, for instance, video files, bring them together and to make some kind of video collage or something like that. So we'll have to see how all of that hangs together. I don't think those things are going to be really useful for the enterprise at this stage, but for home users, it might be something that's interesting to play around with. So Microsoft says that these agent capabilities are going to be rolled out to Windows 11 once they come out of preview gradually and that they're using the foundations of Windows 11 security to make sure that they remain secure. Now, strangely enough, I tend to flip between ChatGPT and Copilot for Windows quite a lot. I haven't really quite worked out why I, I do that yet. The big thing, well, one of the big things that I think for me is missing in Copilot for Windows is the ability to organize the chats. In ChatGPT, at least if you have the pro or enterprise version, you can organize all of your chats into projects. And that's really helpful for going back to chats and just keeping your life organized. At least as far as I can work out in Copilot for Windows at the moment, it's just a bottomless pit of chats. There's no way to organize them into projects. So I think for me to you know, find Copilot for Windows even more useful, I'd like to see that feature. One thing that I haven't used very much is the Copilot for Microsoft 365 app itself, which I also have on my device. I haven't quite worked out why I don't use it, maybe because Copilot is so well integrated into the office experiences. There's no need for me to go to the app, but I have to think about that and I'll let you know what the problem is with that app going forwards. Uh, just a side note, I did try some of the agent experiences in uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot this week, one of them being create an image. Uh, it's a bit rubbish, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> I think it depends what kind of image you're trying to create, but I was trying to create a YouTube thumbnail and it wasn't even able to create the, dim the image in the right dimensions for a YouTube thumbnail. So it's, you know, why they're saying that these things in Copilot are designed for specific tasks, in my mind, they're pretty dumb. I also tried the background remover in Paint, the application that's built into Windows. Absolute rubbish. It wasn't able to remove the background in any accurate way. And I went back to using the free background remover that Adobe has available in uh, on their website. It works much, much better. So I think there's quite a way for Microsoft to go for some of these experiences before they replace third-party options. Let me know what you think about Copilot for Windows. Is it something that you've been using? If you also have access to ChatGPT, like me, do you use both or do you use ChatGPT exclusively? I'd love to know what you think. I'm going to do an episode sometime in the future on is ChatGPT going to become the new operating system because they announced, I think it was the week before last, that they're going to have essentially an app store within ChatGPT. And you know, this reminds me of us going for from Windows as the operating system to the browser being the operating system. And now we're all spending so much time in these things like ChatGPT or Copilot. You could essentially argue you know, this is where we spend most of our time and it's now the place that's more important than the underlying operating system itself. So it'll be interesting to see how all of that pans out. But I'd love to know what you think about Copilot
Copilot for Windows and whether you think Microsoft is going in the right direction with it. Before I move on to the next story, I've got a quick favour to ask you. 31% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on 13,569 subscribers. I'd love it if we could push that up to 13,600. So if you'd like to see these weekly news updates from Petri.com, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. This week, of course, was Patch Tuesday and there's a whole load of other updates that Microsoft is saying at least they're rolling out to Windows 24H2 and 25H2. Now I have 24H2 still on all of my devices. I haven't upgraded to 25H2 on any of them yet, but Microsoft says these things are available for both of these versions. Now I don't see a lot of these things. I see some of them and I guess that's just because Microsoft is gradually switching them on uh, you know, across all of the devices they have around the world in a, in a controlled fashion just to make sure, to make extra sure they didn't cause any problems. So let's have a look to see what's been introduced. So now in the settings app, you can control the position of any hardware overlays or hardware control overlays that appear on your screen. So if you're using a notebook, this might be something like adjusting the brightness, adjusting the volume, and you get this kind of transparent overlay that sits on top of your desktop appear when you change those things with the function buttons. Now you're able to change the position of where those things appear. I guess that's going to be useful to some people. File Explorer is also getting uh, some AI integrations. I don't see these yet, but it's uh, something in the context menu when you right click on a file, depending on the kind of file that you click, I guess. And it's now a, a new menu option there that says AI tools. And there will be various things, I guess, again, depending on what kind of file type you right click that will allow you to do things like perform a, a Bing visual search, uh, remove uh, an an object background using paint. As I said before, that was pretty rubbish, but anyway. And if you're a Microsoft 365 Copilot user, you would be able to also summarize a file. So you're getting some basic actions there that you can quickly jump to via File Explorer. Windows Share now allows you to pin your most commonly shared to apps. So that's great. I do see this change in my version of Windows. I think, well, if you're going to allow people to pin apps, why not allow people to also pin their contacts as well. So that would be something I would like to see also in the share dialogue. Administrator protection, we've again talked about on this channel before. It's kind of a more sophisticated version of user account control, which has quite a lot of limitations. I won't go into all the technical details behind that again. Now, I'm not quite sure whether this has been included. They said that it was included. It should have been included, I think, in September's update, but it was delayed. I think, as far as I can understand, understand from the wording of all these things that it should be in this update that we saw this week. Again, I'm not seeing it on my device, but just because I'm not seeing it doesn't mean that you might not see it on your device. I will get it at some point. So that's a major security feature uh, upgrade to Windows 11 that hopefully you should see or should all see sometime over the next few weeks. And you've, of course, understood that it was Patch Tuesday this week, if you haven't already. And I don't usually talk too much about Patch Tuesday because it's a bit boring in general. But there are a few things, well, a couple of things here that are worth noting. So this is the last free security update for Windows 10, unless your organization is going to pay for extended security updates. This is it. This is it. You're going to have to move to a different operating system, upgrade to Windows 11, if you just want to continue to receive security updates for free. Now, there are some exceptions to that, I believe, depending on maybe which territory you're in and various other factors. But in general, you should be planning to move away from Windows 10 if you're not prepared to pay for those updates for the next year or two. There were also free zero days that are currently 
being exploited in the wild. So it's important to get this pack tested and to get it rolled out to your users as quickly as possible. So there is a problem with secure boot that you're able to bypass this. There was a remote code execution flaw in a modem driver and a Windows Remote Access Manager vulnerability. Do get this cumulative update tested as quickly as possible because these things are being actively exploited in the wild. I'm going to leave another video on the screen now for you about OpenAI and the agent kit software that it released last week, which is hopefully going to really empower developers to create agents and get them working in production systems much faster than was possible before. And that's it for me for this week. I'd like to thank the sponsors of this video again, Chaosoft, and I'll see you next time.